Today is a rainy, nasty day outside, but that makes it a good day for doing some equipment maintenance. So I'm gonna work on changing the transmission oil in this John Deere X370 lawn tractor. This particular unit has hydrostatic power steering as well as hydraulic deck lift. So it's a step up from your base X300 series tractor. According to the manual, the X390 and the X394 also use the same procedure for changing the hydraulic oil. So it probably is the same transmission and the same setup. I have not done this before, so we're gonna see how easy it is as a DIY maintenance item. So let's jump into it. The owner's manual says to go ahead and remove the mower deck before doing this, but that seems to me to add a whole lot of work to this procedure, so I'm gonna try and get away without doing that. Here's the front side of the transmission. This transmission has two drain plugs. There's one here on the main part of the transmission and the other one toward the back on the differential case. The black cover there is where the hydraulic oil filter is. So once you drain the oil, you put a 3 8 inch socket in there and you can open that cover and remove the filter to replace it. Both of these drain plug bolts are a 12 millimeter socket. So I tried the standard half inch and that was too big, but a 12 millimeter is the size that will fit on there. Coming around the back of the machine, the other drain plug, as my hand is now blocking the light, is right there. And I'll just back out so we kind of get some reference on where that is. So what I've got to do is get those two drain plugs out, drain the oil out of both sides of the transmission and the reservoir where you check the oil level at the back of the machine. And then once the oil's drained, I can remove and replace the filter and then refill the transmission. This transmission only holds 2.4 quarts of hydraulic fluid, so I've just got two cut off milk jugs that I'm gonna slide under here, one under each hole. I'm taking this approach because these are small and I can get them underneath this transmission low to the ground in the garage, so this should work. To help facilitate drainage, I'm gonna open the reservoir here for the hydraulic fluid to let air in. This design is actually something I am not very impressed with about this machine. Let me show you why. So this is the cover from that hydraulic oil reservoir. This does not thread in, and this is why I don't like this design. You've got this outer sort of rubber cover and this is just a friction plug that goes in there, but you can see how much dirt and grit builds up on the underside of this plug. So if you ever needed to add hydraulic oil, you actually risk getting some contamination right into the hydraulic reservoir. Same when you're changing the fluid. So this is not the best design in my opinion. I would like to see some sort of screw cover or something that had a better seal on it on that hydraulic oil reservoir. It's been a bit now. You can see we do still have some drips trickling out and some of that's probably coming from the hydraulic lines running through the steering unit and also the lift cylinders for the mower deck. But I think we've got most of the fluid out because the capacity is 2.4 quarts. And as you can see, we've got, based on this gallon jug, you know, maybe a quart there and then the rest over in the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the drain plugs back in and then move on to working on the filter.
going for this filter, I'm expecting that oil is gonna come and spill out of here. That's why I've got this container under it. Shoot. But there's the filter. It has a spring on this outer end that goes against the cover to help seal it in. There's a gasket on the other back end, the end that goes in. So here is the cover that goes over the filter. And part of the reason that I slipped right off this as it popped out is A, there's a spring pushing against it on the filter. B, this is pretty shallow for the socket. So you don't get a very good bite in there. And then the last reason is you can't really, it was still pretty stiff on the thread. So I, I felt like I needed the ratchet to turn it. And basically you get to that last thread and the thing just, just pops open. So now it's time to get the new filter and set that up. So do you need to do this maintenance? Well, you can decide for yourself. That's the old filter. And here's a new one. Let's go ahead and get this new filter installed in the transmission. So it goes right in there, spring side out. And we've got the cover, and I gotta push in if I can. Oh boy, that's tricky. So this right here is the hardest part, no question. So you gotta get enough pressure on there to catch a thread, and that is difficult here. I think this is why they tell you to take the deck off. Everything else was no big deal. Oh gosh. How is that not catching a thread? Oh. Aha. So it wasn't all the way back. That's why it's difficult. So when that filter goes in, you gotta spin it a little bit to get it past a contact point in there. There we go. I'm kind of curious now to see if I take this out. Okay. All right. Okay, everything looks good. So you just gotta twist it a little. There it goes. So it's not bad, I guess, if you get it lined up in there correctly. There is an O-ring on this plug, so you do want to be careful not to lose that O-ring. And then I'm going to snug this up, but I'm not going to go crazy tight with it. I just want that to seal. Wipe up some of that hydraulic oil. Now that that filter is in, it is time to refill the transmission. The fill is right here at the reservoir at the back of the lawn tractor. Unfortunately, that is way in underneath the body and the rear fender here. There is no way to get a container in here. There's just room for my hand, essentially. So you really need a long neck funnel in order to fill this up. This is the John Deere fluid. So everything that I got to do this came from the John Deere dealer. I'm gonna put it in two quarts. For starters, the transmission holds about 2.4.
So I put in one quart so far, but what's happening is it's actually filling up in the reservoir and this reservoir basically got just about full from one quart. So I need to allow some time for that fluid to actually trickle down through the transmission before I can add a second quart. Shoot. If you go too fast like I just did, you'll actually burp hydraulic oil right up out the top and spill it onto the floor. So you really do have to give it time. So I have two quarts in there now, and at this point, it's not up into the reservoir yet, so it still needs more oil. I'm gonna get the third quart open and start slowly pouring that in there. So definitely tricky to fill this up. I'm sure someone can tell me everything that I've done wrong in this whole process. Right now, the hydraulic oil is a little bit above the full line there on the reservoir. You can see the full and the ad line. They're not very far apart. To fill this to this point, I put in about two and two thirds quarts. I'm hoping that when I start the engine and the pump gets going and starts to circulate the fluid, that that's actually going to drop down a little bit. Let's see what happens. So I ran it for a couple minutes, worked the steering wheel lock to lock, lifted the deck up and down a few times, drove back and forth a little bit, and the level now is pretty much right at that full line, so I'm not going to worry about it. One thought that did occur to me is that the capacity of the transmission itself might be 2.4 quarts but you have a little bit of fluid up here in the reservoir, which may be contributing a little bit more to the overall total capacity of fluid in the system. So not a bad DIY maintenance item. Couple lessons learned. Number one, you don't have to remove the mower deck, although access would be a little bit better if you did. Number two, the spring on that hydraulic oil filter really puts a lot of outward pressure on the cover as you're unscrewing it, so just get ready for it to pop. Number three, as you put the hydraulic oil filter in, the new filter, make sure you twist it and rotate it a little bit so that it slides all the way into the housing such that the spring is within the housing, otherwise you'll never push the cover on and get the thread started. And finally, make sure you have a long neck funnel to be able to refill with hydraulic oil and take it slow and don't put in too much at once, otherwise that reservoir will fill up as it's trying to burp out the air and there's a good chance that the hydraulic oil is gonna end up spilling over the top of the reservoir and making a little bit of a mess on the floor. So just go slow and easy on the refill so that you get the right amount in there without spilling and you don't overfill the transmission. The whole process to do this took me about two hours, maybe slightly over two hours, doing this the first time, making some mistakes along the way. The next time I do this, it'll go a lot better, and I would anticipate that I could probably do the whole thing in an hour, maybe a little bit more than an hour by the time I have everything refilled and have run the machine and checked the final levels. So we'll wrap this up here. Hopefully you find this helpful if you happen to have this machine or a 390 or 394 that has the same hydraulic setup and transmission as this X370.